G'day, welcome back to Art with Alison. Now hopefully my microphone is working this time because it was having some problems with it last time. I've tried it out a couple of times and it seems to be working, so cross fingers it is for this video. Okay, so today I'm going to be doing a, probably a straight pour, maybe a bit of a ring pour, see how it goes when I get there. Um, so, I've got my colours in order. Now, the, I can't tell you what all the colours are because some of them are just ones, or well, most of them are leftovers, um, and a lot of them weren't marked. But I'm pretty sure that most of them are Liquitex Basics. Some of them just had LB on them, which let me know they were Liquitex Basics. I do know, I, like I just made this one up and this is dioxazine purple. Now I've made them all up to be very thick. So yeah, it's very thick. And uh, this here is Mars Black, but I mixed in with it some leftover paint, which was basically a metallic black. And... Yeah, so it's now like a metallic. Well, okay, I had to add in the Mars Black because it was too runny and because I wanted it thick. So now it's the consistency that I want. Uh, this one here is the Deco Art Extreme Sheen 24K. You can see this is very thick. This is mixed approximately one and a half times paint to one times flow troll. So it's like the other way around, usually there's more flow troll. But I wanted it thick so that it, it will help to make cells a bit better, I find. So it's nice and thick. And this one, oh, this is a Liquitex Basics. Oh, I'll try and match them up as best I can, but I haven't looked them all up now, what the colours are. So you see, I'll hold it up so you can see how thick it is. So it's leaving a man on a man trail for a little while. This one here is heavy body deep turquoise, this has just been made up, oh it's probably about an hour ago now. Um, now this one and the dioxazine purple, these were heavy body paints and so they're actually mixed, I still wanted them thick but I managed to get them, like I only did a couple of tubes about that long each on the bottom and then the rest is flow troll. So I'm pretty sure it's about five parts flow troll to one part paint. And this one I do know, what is that? It's just over there. This one's light blue permanent. I had some left over and I managed to match that up because again I just, well it, there wasn't much left in it. And this one, oh, this was the, this was the ultramarine blue. This was some grey, I had some grey, it's a lighter grey than this actually, but it was too runny, so I added some darks in purple and some uh, Prussian blue to it, heavy body, and then it was getting a bit too blue and I wanted a grey so I added a little bit of Mars Black so yeah I'm quite happy with the colour it's turned out again you can see it's lovely and thick. This one here is the Extreme Sheen Pink Tourmaline so I had a fair bit left over from another pour and I just added a bit more to it. It's very thick. 
And yeah, I'm pretty sure this one's probably an Araldo paint, but it's a nice metallic purple. And this one, I'm pretty sure, is, well, it had Liquitex Base LB written on it, so I'm not sure. I'll try and look that up. Same with this one. This is a purple. If I can't match them up, the odds are it's because I might have made them up. You know, sometimes I like to add colours to colours to make the colour I want. <laughs> and after a while you forget what you're doing. Anyway, so, now that's a good reason why I should write on the pots what they are. I think the thing is, I think, oh, I remember what that is. And then it ends up being ages before I do another pour with those colours and then of course I've forgotten by then. My memory is not like it used to be. Alright, so this is, this actually is house paint. I find that, well back when I first started I was using house paint for the white all the time and I found it really worked well. It's just the British paints house paint in white and I added, I actually added not that much Floetrol to paint because it, I wanted the paint to be at least almost as thick as the other paints and it was quite runny. The uh, Floetrol is getting to the end of the uh, four litre container that's approximately a gallon and it seemed very liquidy what's on the bottom of that um, is what I used for this it was different flow trial I used in those ones and so yeah, I ended up probably two parts paint to one part flow trial and then I added oh quite a bit of the um, I added quite a bit of the satin enamel deco art, which gives a cloud effect. I probably put in about eight sp scoopfuls of that into here. And I realised that that's what makes it go so lovely and fluffy. Uh, like. Uh, Sarah Mack, her, her white always looks like a lovely soft cloud. <laughs> Funny that. Um, this is, makes the cloud effect. Anyway, so hopefully this will work nicely. I don't want big fluffy clouds, but I just want it to work nicely with the other paints, really. All right, enough of me talking. I will now... Get my jug done. I'm probably not going to talk much. I might even speed this up. We shall see. Just want a little bit of the white. Okay, I'll just explain. I decided, which I've changed my mind, I was going to go straight to the black after that, but that might go grey. I want it quite dark near the middle. I do want a little bit of white just for the contrast, but I would like it quite dark as well. We shall see how it all turns out. Oh, noises, noises. <laughs> I live with lots of dogs. I have, I've got a litter of puppies that are just one week old. And they're in, like, where I am is the kitchen, family area. Here they are squeaking. Um, so everything happens in here. And so there's the dogs in here. There's one behind me chewing on a bone, it sounds like. 
just not a fresh one, an old one. <laughs> and the puppies are over the other side of the room. And lots of my dogs snore loudly when they sleep. So you'll probably hear loud snoring at some stage, especially as it's very late at night now. I should have put some white in a smaller container for this part because it does make it a bit more tricky but we shall get there Okay, so I marked it off this time where I wanted it to go because last time I kept going. Um, so this is a this is a 20 by 16 inch or 50 by 40 centimeter canvas. So I have put in here. Um, I think it was 550 mil or about, it's about 18 ounces. Right, I'll just clear this away and then we'll get started. Okay, oh wow. Look how pretty that's looking on the top. Look how they... Uh, Extreme Machine Gold's already making a beautiful cell. 
So hopefully that's a good omen. All right, now I need to get the white. All right, now a lovely lady called Cheryl. She gave me the idea of, or she suggested using some books covered in plastic to rest my arm on while I do a pour because I have problems with my neck and shoulder. And so uh, I thought, oh, okay, maybe I can, instead of the books, what have I got? I've got a big tin of paint, haven't I? <laughs> so I tried this before and it worked really well. So I'll be resting my arm on this. You probably can't see it. Let's see if I can tip it around. On this tin of paint while I do my pour. I've got it. I've got the phone on a slight angle because that way you might be able to see what I'm pouring at rather than straight above. We shall see. Right, so this is this lovely mix with the cloud pour, cloud effect stuff in it. And I'll just put this. Down here, I, my inspiration for this type of painting comes from Sarah Mack. I just love watching her work. And this is the, where the inspiration for this painting comes from. Oh, there's a puppy dog. All right, I'll just put a bit more in, in the middle. Oh, there's a baby puppy dog. Hope this is thick enough. So I think having this big pillow there helps. Oh, look at those colors. <laughs> All right. Always a scary part. I didn't put white in at the top this time because I just wanted to see what difference that makes. Just about every other time I've ended up with white on the top. All right, let's try and head for the middle of that. Oh, this bit's always the scariest. Don't know what you're going to end up with, but you can only do so much planning and preparation, and the rest is up to the paint. Wouldn't you know it, right in the middle, the battery, well, it's not the battery, there's plenty of battery, but the phone just goes, oh, no, I'm going to stop now. But I do want to keep going, because I want to get to that white at the end. I hope I haven't mucked it up by having to stop. to that white for some reason. I think there wasn't enough 
and I don't want it just to be all yucky. All right, now again that's moving in that direction, isn't it? Uh, need to get paddle pop stick. Give it a minute to to make any changes it wants to. Give it a torch. I wonder if I should have kept going, even though I knew this phone had stopped, at least until I finished the pour. So it might have made quite a difference. But anyway, we'll work with what we've got, and so far it's looking quite nice. I'm loving these cells around here. They're coming up. That beautiful bright pink there is gorgeous. Not so keen on that big piece of purple there, but it might change. She has lots of bubbles. It's good to pop them early because you find that where you pop them, it, it shows the colour that's just underneath. And if you do it at the end, just at the you know only at the end, then. You often end up, I found, with just lots of little black dots all over your painting. So if you're finding that's happening, you might want to make sure you do your torching early. Oh, look, some lovely little cells are coming up in here. Still a lot of paint for this size canvas I can see. Spread some of this around so it can hopefully keep the composition as much as possible and then I can decide as I'm going how I want it to be basically. If you don't have this and it's just bare canvas, then the paint will stick to the canvas and then just roll under itself and then you lose your paint that's on the edges because it will go underneath. Whereas this way it helps it just to run over or it kind of just sort of pushes kind of runs over it and it pushes the the paint rather than getting caught on the canvas So, uh, let's give this a bit of a stretch 
and see how it goes. See how it's just pushing that paint? So much paint on this. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, anyway, it gives me room to stretch and keep bits I want. You always find out that you want to keep most of it. <laughs> Need a bigger canvas, maybe. Yeah. I don't know why, but I, I don't know that I like that bit. Usually that's my favourite bit. But I'm liking this bit here. Jess reminds me of a previous pour. Um, can't remember the number. These bits are so pretty there. And then these bits down here are gorgeous. <laughs> it's always a dilemma with these pours. Look like I'm going all over the place, but I'm actually just seeing if I can straighten that up a little bit, so I can decide what I want to do with that. Yeah, see, I've managed to get that straight again. Um, whoa, look at all this paint coming off this end. Um, but hey, yeah, there's so much of that purple, I don't mind at all. This might look really interesting if it does get stretched out. Might just see if I can go down there a bit. One thing I can always do, which I've done with paintings in the past, is even if you don't want the white on the corners, you can just scrape that off and put in a different colour. You don't have to go over the whole way, because that's so pretty there, and this bit here, it's just gone off, basically. Let's go to This here is really pretty. Oh, and these lines up through here. Wow, they're gorgeous. Mm. Right, so I'm preferring this side to that side. That is pretty, but it's just not quite as interesting. I might just give it a torch, another torch just now. See what else comes up. Just wipe some of this paint off. I always think it's better to take your time, you know. Okay, I guess you guys don't want to be waiting around watching but you can always skip forward a bit um, I'll probably edit out bits that I think aren't necessary but I think it, the most important thing is the painting and to get your best 
possible result, you need to just take a little bit of time and think about what you're aiming for, what develops, what surprises you, it turns out to be really wonderful and you want to keep. If you rush too fast and you look back and you go, oh no, I should have done it, or it happens anyway, I look back at my videos and go, oh no, why didn't I do it this way? But yeah, hopefully you're more likely to end up with something that you really like if you take your time. And also I've got to see whether or not there's, you know, it looks like there's is stuff under this purple. Have to give that a chance to show itself. Sometimes it takes time for the cells to come up. And you might think a part of your painting's really boring and hey, let's just get rid of that. But if you give it a little bit of time, you can be surprised. All right. All right, I've got all these push pins underneath to hold the painting with so I don't muck up the bits that come off the sides. I'm just going to head towards this corner a bit, but I really am not aiming to go off because I'm loving that stripe there. So that'll go as far. Um, I wonder if there's some way, like if it hooks itself over the corner somehow, it can end up helping to stretch it out. I wonder if that will help pushing that off. It's all trial and error. See, it's already sort of coming down there a bit, isn't it? Except it might stop because there's no paint there. Just got to try these things out, but then I don't want to lose what's up here, so that might be as far as I can go. I was wondering if I could trick it into going off the edge, if that works or not, it probably won't. Uh, I can just suck it over. Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> I'm just hoping it might sort of grab on and then it's not all just going to flow back as soon as I head back that way. It might help to stretch it out. Yeah, look, it is working. It's holding it on to that part there, see? So now it's helping to stretch this part out rather than it all just go back again. Oh, I'm pleased with that. And I will end up just painting over that, so that's all right. Um, right. This could be nice if it was stretched out, but um, I think I'm going to pull off to about here. centered. I bring it back so the paint goes off in the middle rather than where I'm going. That's good. Hopefully that will now stretch out these bits. And we'll head down that way. Because, yeah, still not much has happened on that side, so... Just head straight down for a bit, and then I'll head off in that direction. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. A lot of my paintings seem to end up being symmetrical. 
well not a lot but some oh it's a dog under my feet this puppy is getting bigger and bigger and she used to not take up much room at all but now there's a great dog by my under my feet <laughs> and look she's bringing it back to the middle as in she's saying not doesn't it? it's not symmetrical what am I on about okay yeah I'm not sure I love this bit these bits are very pretty now I'm not so keen on that middle bit at all I might just shove that off somewhat or I could make it go off that way I don't want to lose these it's a pity to lose that but that's what happens right oh look these are coming up they're so pretty can't have everything all right, we'll kind of hit it. Down a bit. And now over there. to recenter the paint just for the weight of it. Right. Don't want that all too skew iffy. Oh that's really pretty. It's really different. Oh, loving it. Yeah. That's lovely. Love those colours. I'm dripping in paint. I'm going to give it another torch. It's telling me my battery's low, so um, I might have to do something off camera and then show you the results. I think that's an insect. I oh, know it's a hare. Not surprising with all the dogs around. I saw something else. I think it's just a bubble. Alright, let's give it another torch. And then I'm going to do stuff to these corners. Um, and that will probably be it. So you might not see me actually doing those, but you can see the end result. Maybe I'll pause it now and see if there's enough battery left. All right, I've just decided I do want this to be a bit skew -iffy. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> um, I'm just going to head that down slightly this way. That's enough because all this is starting to bunch up. Here we are. Alright, I'm going to work out what 
I'm doing with the corners now. So it's bouncing around but I have to touch it to get it going again. I just thought I'd, oh, I should scrape that off really. Um, so I mean it might not work, I might need to use something else but there is still paint in here. So I thought I might try seeing if this will look good. Should blend in with the rest. Okay, so you can see I've done a few little things. I did this corner here. And I did this corner here. And I did a little bit, I'll show you on the other side that. And I did that corner up there. I'll just go around the other side and show you. Actually, while well, I'm here, may as well show you some close-ups. So these are quite interesting, these cells along here. These ones I really like. I love that turquoise in there. I think that looks nice next to the purple. I did this on this corner. I think it'll be quite subtle. And this is this from this side on that corner. It's quite pretty. So my dog's over there. The pink isn't quite as pink, I think. <laughs> well, it's, I don't know, more a coral, I think, than a light pink. It's kind of lightening it up in this film. Probably because I've got the flash on. Alright, so these cells here I think are really pretty. Love those bright, bright aqua cells in there. I think I must have had one of those colours, must have been the extreme sheen um, what's it called? Something like aquamarine. As I said I wasn't quite sure, but they're the ones that bring up these bright blue cells. Those lines there are just gorgeous. Aren't they pretty? Glad I kept some of that. And these ones, I think those colours are lovely. Alright, oh, and I need to put this in the other room there to dry and maybe, maybe with some of this poured off paint, I might see what there is if I can dip some cabochons in them to make some jewellery. Okay, I'll try and get a bit of a picture of this for you. Oh, better go see to those puppies. Okay, catch you later. Okay, here it is dry. I'll 
show you. So, turned out quite nice, I think. <laughs> Didn't really change in the drying. Get that on an angle. The sun's going down, so there's not much light at the moment, but you can see the gold a little bit shine. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. I'll go back a bit. Yep, very happy. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to those of you who have subscribed. I really appreciate it. And don't forget it's free for those who haven't. Now I have an Etsy store. If you're interested in buying any of my artwork, most of it is for sale. And uh, I've only got a few up there at the moment. If what you're after isn't there, you can always contact me by email, which is in my description as well. And I have a Facebook group. I'd love you to join and share your artwork and help in the discussions and everything. I'd love for you to join. That's in the um, description as well. Okay. And I have a Facebook group, a uh, Facebook page of my stuff basically is on that one. Anyway. <laughs> I do appreciate you watching and catch you again later.